Okay, so let's continue. So, okay, so here's the example. The question is to construct the singular validity composition of the arbitrary matrix A. So, A matrix A is not a rectangular matrix, but two by three matrix. So, yeah, we cannot use the eigenvalue composition in this case. So, we need to uh, another composition method, just called the single bed composition or the SVD. Okay, so let's do that. First of all, to, to, uh, to decompose the matrix A as a SVD, we have to follow the several steps. The first step is to find the orthogonal diagonalization of the A transport A. Orthogonal diagonalization of matrix A, it means that find the eigenvalues of A transport A and eigenvectors, corresponding eigenvectors, corresponding eigenvector. This is the first step. The, in the second step, we have to set the V and sigma. In this case, we find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, then we can easily, we can easily build the matrix V and matrix sigma. So, so in here, uh, you, Sigma V transport. We have to find these three matrix, but from step one and step two, we can build the Vn sigma, Vn sigma, right? And what else? U, right? So in step three, in in step three, we have to construct the U, construct the U, and finally we can decompose the matrix A as a U sigma. We transpose, right? So this is a singular variety composition. So let's just to do that step by step, right? Okay, so first of all, find the eigenvalues of the A transpose A and uh, corresponding also normal set of the eigenvectors. Eigenvectors, eigenvectors of the A transpose A, right? So to, to this end, First of all, we have to estimate the A, A transpose A, right? So A is here, 4, 8, 11, uh, 7, 13, min, uh, negative 2, right? Here, and A transpose here, right? And then we have to compute the matrix multiplication, this row by this column. So in this case, uh, AT, right? And this one, can be computed by this this row by this column, this one computed by this row times this column, and and this one is computed by this row times this column, this one, this one, this one, and this one, right? So you can easily uh, compute a transpose a, right? Now this is the square matrix whose size is three by three, right? And first of all, we have to compute the eigenvalues of A transpose A. So how can I find how can I find that? So A transpose A minus lambda I determinant is equal to zero. Right. So you can do that now, right? Because we already talked about this one in the previous lecture, so you can find out this one. So, so by formulating this one, you can find out the characteristic equation. Uh, characteristic equation, and by uh, by solving the characteristic equation, you can find out lambda one is equal to three. Uh, yeah, three, uh, 360, and lambda 2 is the 90, and lambda 3 is equal to 0, right? So please do it yourself, right? It's very easy. And then, how can I find V1? Because this is a corresponding, uh, corresponding unit vector, unit vector, because the, we want to know the also normal set, so we have to find out the unit vector, unit vector, then how can I do that? How can I do that? A transpose A times 
x is equal to lambda x we have to find the solution x to satisfy this one and then normalize normalize to have a unit norm to have a unit norm so in this case v1 will be the something like this v2 is something like this and v3 is something like this right so so okay i will show some example okay so first of all okay a transpose a is 100, 114, 114, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, can find this vector with the normalization. This is one example, right? So you can also find out v1, v2, v3, right? So this is the just step one. So by so first of all, by using the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, we can decompose the A transpose A. The, okay, let's say this is uh, another matrix. We can find out uh, orthogonal diagonalization of the a transpose a right actually we do we do not need to we do not need to or orthogonal diagonalization of the a transpose a but we need to find out the eigenvalues eigenvectors of the a transpose a matrix right then then we can easily we can easily find out the matrix v and matrix sigma matrix a matrix v and matrix sigma right so first of all first of all we uh, we need to arrange the eigenvalues of the a transpose a in the de uh, decreasing order decreasing order why because we need we want to make a here yeah we want to make a sigma shape of the sigma something like this non zero part here zero part here so first of all We can rearrange the this eigenvalues, something like 360, uh, 90, 0. Then corresponding v1, v2, v3 wall here, right? So this is just the right singular vectors of the matrix A. Right, uh, yeah, right, uh, right singular values of matrix A. So yeah, v1 is here, v1. And we to see here, and we three are here, right? So by using the made unit vector, a uh, unit eigenvector v one, v two, and v three, we found the matrix v. Okay. So, and then how can I how can I find the sigma? Sigma is defined the t with the zero values, zero vectors, right? How can I find the matrix d? Matrix D consists of the scale root of the eigenvalues, scale root of eigenvalues, or the singular vertical motion, which is same, right? Then, then sigma one is equal to scale root of the three hundred sixty. Sigma two is equal to scale root of the what? Ninety, right? Ninety. And sigma three is equal to square root of zero, so it will be six six square root of ten, three square root of ten, and zero, right? So this uh, non-zero singular values, uh, the diagonal entry of the vector uh, matrix D, so and then. The matrix sigma is same size of the matrix A, so with the D is in the up, each upper upper left corner, something like this, right? So, in other words, sigma one is here, 
Sigma 2 is here and uh, Sigma 3 is 0 but there is the size of the sigma sigma should be same as the a right so it will be just the 2 by 3 because the matrix a was the 2 by 3 so we we just fill out the zeros here right so this is just the sigma uh, sigma matrix right so in other words okay we found the matrix v and matrix sigma so we found the matrix V and matrix sigma then remaining thing is the matrix U okay so finally let's construct the matrix U let's construct the matrix U so how can you do that when the matrix A has a length R length R the first out columns of the U are Normalize the vectors obtained from the AV1 through the AVR. AV1 through the AVR. Why? So from the from the theorem. From the theorem. So here's that. Yeah, here. So the also normal basis u i can be uh, can be estimated by normalizing each a v i to obtain the also normal basis defined like this, right? Because this is the definition for the definition of the singular value decomposition. So we can easily find the u i using the singular values and a times vi right we already know the singular value and a and vi then we can find out the matrix u right so how can we do that so first of all u1 is equal to 1 over sigma, uh, sigma i times a v1 a v1 sigma 1 was the 6 uh, 6 square 10 6 uh, root square 10, a v1 is uh, 18, 6, 18, 6, so you will be something like this, u2 also can, also can be, uh, can be computed similarly, so 1 over sigma 2 times a times v2, right, so 1 over sigma 2 here, a v2 here, and u2 is something like this, right, but, <coughs> In this case, in this case, a has a two non-zero singular values. A has a two non-zero, uh, two non-zero singular values. Where is that? This one and this one, right? The length of a is just two. Length a a is equal to two, right? A is equal to two. So we can we can find out the u one and u two directly from the v one and v two, right? But in some case, we cannot generate the u1 and u2 from the v1 and v2. In some case, so in that case, in those case, we have to uh, find out another matrix u by using the uh, computed u1 and u2. Okay, I will show you the, these uh, examples in the next example. But in here, we can. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, we can find out the u1 and u2 di directly from the sigma1, sigma2, v1 and v2. Okay, so u1 and u2 in ordinary basis for the R2 space. R2 space, so the we, no additional vectors are needed for matrix U. So matrix U is just the u1 and u2. So Finally, u1 is here, u2 is here, so matrix u is equal to u1, u2. Okay, so in other words, this is matrix u, and this is matrix sigma, and this is matrix v, right? So, because the matrix A was the 2 by 3 matrix, the matrix, the size of the matrix u is the 2 by 2, uh size of the matrix sigma is two by three and uh size of the matrix v is a three by three 
So finally, by definition, we have to find the free transport. Not free, so just you have to transport uh, the matrix V. Okay, so this is called the SVT, or the singular valid composition of the arbitrary matrix A. Okay, so actually this is the kind of the matrix diagonalization similar to the eigenvalue decomposition, but comparing to the eigenvalue decomposition. Okay, so please compare this one to the eigen decomposition. Comparing to the eigen decomposition, this matrix and this matrix are different, but related, but different. And there is the diagonalized matrix here with the singular values of the matrix A. Okay, so this is the singular value decomposition. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, let's find the singular values decomposition of the matrix A defined by something like this. Okay, so first of all, the size of matrix A is 3 by 2, right? So, U sigma V transport should have the what three by three, three by two, and two by two. Okay, okay. So similar to the previous example, let's let's find the singular valid composition of this matrix A. Okay, so. First of all, what do you have to do? So first of all, we have to find out the I am values, I am vectors of the A transpose A as in step one. And then by using the those I am values, I am vectors, we can set up the V and sigma. And by using the V and sigma, we can construct the matrix U, okay? So let's do that. First of all, to find the eigenvalues, eigenvectors of the A transpose A. First of all, we have to find out A transpose A, right? So if we find out A transpose A, it is defined the 9, negative 9, negative 9, 9. Okay. And then you can easily find out the eigenvalues of the A transpose A, uh, 18 and 0. 18 and 0. Right, so you can do that, right? With the corresponding unit vectors as a V1 and V2, okay? So you, you can also do that, right? Corresponding vectors, right? So first of all, these unit vectors from the columns of the V, so V is equal to this vector. Right? Okay. So this is vector V and uh, these singular values uh sigma one is equal to scale root of the lambda one. Okay, this is lambda one, this is lambda two. So three scale to two and sigma two is equal to zero. Okay. So these king singular values uh sigma one and sigma two. Okay. And what else? What's next? We have to find out the matrix U, matrix U, right? So, okay, so before that, first of all, sigma, matrix sigma is just like D0000 because the size of sigma is 3 times 2, so 3 times 2, so single value 3 times, uh, 3 times scale of 2, here and limiting things are zero 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 okay so we found the matrix v and matrix sigma and we have to find the matrix u uh, so to find the matrix v a matrix u first of all we have to find out the a v1 and a v2 and then by using the a v1 and a v2 we can compute the here. We can compute the u i as just one over sigma i times a v i, right? 
So, so AV1 is something like this, AV2 is something like this. Right? But, but, as you know, as you know, as you know, these zero, ve zero vectors uh, cannot be cannot be contained in the also no, uh, also normal basis, right? Because this is just the trivial solution, trivial, uh, trivial, um, how to say, uh, trivial vector, trivial vector. So we we need we need to find out another matrix, uh, ma another another vector u. Another vector u. That 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 fill the matrix u. Okay. So first of all, u one is just computed from here, right? So this is just uh, sigma one. So u one is just like one over three root two times a v one, and it can be some computed something like this, right? But we only have the u one, so we need to the expand, expand the set u one to the also normal basis for the three R three space, R three space. So we need to find out the two more vectors, u two and u three, right? So in other words, because the u is three by three matrix, but we only now we only have the u1 so we have to find the u2 and u3 from the u1 okay actually there are there are many possible ways to find out the u2 and u3 so that's why this single value decompo is, is not unique but here i just to use the this not, uh uh this equality so the each vector each vector u2 and u3 must satisfy u1 times x is equal to zero. It means that each vector x, uh, each uh, u2 or u3 should also go to the u1, right? So this is the one constraint. So which is equivalent to the equation like this. So because the u1 is here, by computing the u1 transpose times x x we have the equation something like this right then the, ca the question is how can I find the vector that satisfy this one oh, this this matrix uh, this equation so as you know there are so many uh, so many uh, possible solution of the this equation right but if you find out the um, if you find out the basis for the this solution, we can find out two bases something like this, right? How can you do that? You can do something like this. So in here, x one is two x two minus two x three, and x two and x three, and it will be x2 2 1 0 plus x3 negative 2 0 1 so these two vectors are basis right these two vectors are basis right okay so we found the two basis for the possible vectors possible vector x which will be the candidate for the u2 or u3 u2 or u3 but there is one more constraint u2 and u3 should be orthogonal each other should be orthogonal each other u2 u3 should orthogonal each other but in this case w1 w2 is not zero it's not orthogonal each other right so so how can we solve this? We can use the gram schmidt process. Gram schmidt process to the 
W1 and W2 to find out the orthogonal basis, orthogonal vector U2 and U3. Also normal basis, right? We have to find out the uh, also normal basis. So we can find out also normal vectors from W1 and W2 by using the gram schmitz process. Okay, so you we already talked about the gram schmitz process. And from W1 and W2, we can find out U2 and U3 here. Okay, so now we have a uh, u1 and u2 and u3 the final matrix a is the something like this and we already have the sigma and v then we can finally compose the matrix a as a matrix u and matrix sigma and v transpose please remember this is v transpose not a v itself so this is the, our final uh, singular value decomposition of the arbitrary matrix A. Okay, so that's it. So this is the singular value decomposition. So this is singular value decomposition. Actually, there the, in the singular value decomposition. Actually, as you can see here. If you compute, if you compute, uh, if you compute the uh, this matrix multiplication, actually, only this part, this part, this part, and this part make a matrix A. Actually, um, actually. Those kinds of terms are not used to build the matrix A. So finally, we can we can introduce the reduced uh, singular variety composition. So here is the definition. When sigma contains rows or columns of the zero, zeros, a uh, more compact decomposition, more compact decomposition of matrix A is possible. So so. Here is the definition. Okay, so we can decompose the we can partition the matrix U as a U R and U M minus R. So in this case, this is U R, this is U M minus R, and matrix V as a V R and V M minus R. So this is V R, this is a V M minus R, right? So. In this case, U R is M M times, uh, M by R, V R is N by R, right? Then, then from here, from here, this is this is the original U sigma, V transpose. We can rewrite this term as a U R T V R transpose, not U sigma v transpose but we can represent matrix a as a u r t v r transpose okay so actually this is the same so finally this factorization this factorization is called the reduce the singular value decomposition of matrix a okay so that's the, our final uh, last concept so comparing to the, the singular value decomposition by using the uh, this reduce Singular value decomposition. We can, we can reduce the, uh, we can reduce the labor intensive process to find out the also normal, uh, two more also normal vectors, something like this, right? We can just uh, rep uh, we can just represent the matrix A as a this reduced uh, singular value decomposition term, right? So this is the. Actually, this is the last page of the, this semester. So if I uh, if I mention again, we can represent this matrix A as a matrix U sigma V transpose. So it will be the SVD, and this is the RSVD, or reduced singular value decomposition. Okay, so this is the last page. 
Okay, so this is end of this semester, but in Thursday we'll have a homework three review. So, so that lecture will be the our last lecture. But anyway, so our we we already talked about we already covered the to uh this semester's scope. So from lecture one through to the lecture fourteen, this lecture. We've uh, we've covered the uh, uh five chapters, right? From chapter one, chapter two, and chapter what was the chapter three, right? And chapter 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 five, six, seven. Okay, six chapters, right? So anyway, so it was very long journey. So I I hope you learned from something from this semester. So yeah, thank you very much. And as you know, we have a final exam next week, so we only have the seven days, right? So as you as you guess, there are so many things to study, right? So I strongly suggest you please start the study as soon as possible and to my, to your best to take your first uh. To take your first final exam in in undergrad life. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, see you Thursday.